If you're like most players, you're always searching for a competitive advantage on the court to gain an edge in pickleball. One strategy is to hone a devastating serve. However, power is not the primary goal. Here are five simple ways to increase your serve strength, consistency, and general effectiveness, all of which can help you win more pickleball matches. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Pro Pickleball Media, your number one spot for all pickleball content. Our channel is dedicated to the fastest growing sport in the U.S., and we cover all fun and exciting things related to pickleball. So if you love pickleball and want to learn more about it, just take a few seconds to subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss any of our recent videos. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video where we will share some tips and tricks that can help you to win more pickleball games. Now let's get right into the video. Tip number one, serve and rotate those hips and shoulders. Many players, when serving, rely solely on their arms and muscles. They're not utilizing their lower body or putting any extra effort into using their legs to increase their strength. While serving with just your arm is simple and reliable, it won't give you much power. Your chances of succeeding at more difficult serves are diminished by using this method. If you want to improve your serve without using your arms exclusively, try shifting your weight to your back foot at the beginning of the serve and then to your front foot at the end of the serve. This is essential for maximizing your serve's power and involving your lower body. In order to put as much force as possible into your serve, you should rotate your hips, open your chest in this motion. You're at a spot where you can easily hit a drive and add some spin if you choose. Tip number two, serve with a closed or semi-open stance to get full rotation and power. When it comes to serving the ball, it's not uncommon to see players standing in an open stance, which is similar to the first mistake we covered. When both your legs and your chest are parallel with the baseline, you're said to be in an open stance. Additionally, your body should be open to the net. Instead, adopting a closed stance is preferable since it provides greater stability. A closed stance is when both of your feet are aligned behind each other and your chest is turned towards the line and denotes the end of the playing field. In the middle is the semi-open stance, which is when your chest is open between the net and out of bounds. This posture may be found between the closed and open stances. When you serve, you do not want to have an open stance because you want to give your body enough room to rotate through the ball. Although it's true that some professionals employ open stance and are very successful with it, it's not a good idea for most players to begin with that kind of stance. It might help to think about this in terms of a golfer or a baseball player if you're having trouble visualizing it. They're in a closed or semi-closed stance just before they make contact with the balls, and the front of their chest is not turned toward the pitcher or the fairway. Tip number three, swing with a relaxed motion, starting with a loose and relaxed grip. The ability to serve with pace, topspin, and depth are the three components that contribute to a really excellent serve. If you abbreviate your swing and make your motion with your arm tighter, you will reduce the likelihood that you will strike all three of those important spots. When serving, you should maintain a full swing that is relaxed throughout the whole motion of the serving action. The problem with this piece of advice is that it leads players to abruptly cease moving the paddle after making contact with the ball, which results in a motion that is almost like a whip rather than a full follow through. Or if the player does manage to take the paddle through the swing, their arms are too tight to allow for a smooth motion. Instead, a fantastic method for producing force is to actually loosen your hold on the paddle a little bit. You want the pressure of your hold to be somewhere between 3 and 4 on the scale from 1 to 10, with 10 representing a death grip. By loosening our grip, we're able to relax our arms and shoulders, while in turn making it easier to swing through the ball. Relaxing your hold on the paddle allows you to swing it faster, which in turn results in a more forceful swing. This may sound counterintuitive, but it's actually true. You're getting closer to being able to serve with more power, then your arm starts to feel like a noodle. Now, before we move ahead to talk about more game-changing pickleball tips, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can keep bringing more informative pickleball content to you. Your little contribution means a lot for us. Tip number four, start with a small to medium backswing for a more efficient serve. A more powerful serve can be achieved by increasing the speed of the swing, as was previously stated. However, this does not imply that you need an extremely large backswing. Point of fact, a large backswing is more likely to injure you than help you since it inhibits you from hitting the sweet spot on the paddle more frequently. A backswing that is small to medium in length is preferable since it makes it simpler to produce power and strike the effective part of the paddle. Where can I find the small to the medium? Imagine you're paddling and the paddle begins at your knee or your hip. Your follow-through should reach up to your shoulder on the other side of your body. Tip number five, release the ball from waist level to ensure that you have a consistent contact point. The last piece of advice concerns the manner in which the ball should be dropped or released just before it's struck by the paddle. Because you start off with the ball in one hand and your paddle's in the other, having a good drop is really important. 
The primary objective of your drop is to position the ball such that it is within the optimal contact point as much as possible. In addition, the optimal contact point is directly in front of your body, around the knee that is in front of you. If you make your initial touch behind your knee, or too far out in front of your body, you will lose part of the momentum that you have built up by being in a superb starting posture and shifting your weight from your back to your front. Players frequently make one of two common errors. Either they hit the ball after it has been tossed into the air, or they strike it as soon as it's released from their grasp. Because of these faults, timing your drops in conjunction with these actions will be difficult. Instead, players should drop the ball in front of the baseline from a position about equivalent to their waist level. This gives you the opportunity to bring your paddle through at approximately knee level for the initial impact, giving you more time to do so. In addition to this, it assures that the ball will be in front of the court, which is where the most force will be generated from our serves. You'll need some practice to perfect this serve, but once you do, you'll be able to maintain your consistency and give your serve a lot of power. Bonus tip 1. Stop taking such a big swing on your return. Players, particularly those below the 4 and 5 level, have a tendency to take strong swings on their returns, similar to how they hit their drives. This is especially true for players below the 4 and 5 level. What is not taken into account is the fact that these two images are wholly distinct from one another and aim to accomplish quite different things. When taking the return shot, you should focus primarily on driving the ball to the back of the court. Hitting it deep not only buys you more time to go forward, but it also makes it more difficult for your opponent to make a strong third shot. Big swings have the potential to work, but they also have the potential to cause you to make a lot of mistakes that aren't necessary. If your opponents are hitting powerful deep serves at you, the most effective strategy is to use a compact stroke while moving through the ball with your legs. To accomplish this, shorten your backswing and start a bit behind the baseline. This will give you room to move forward before you strike the ball and will give you more power when you do hit it. Even though you want to achieve a deep return, this does not imply that you need to increase the amount of power that you apply. If you reduce your backswing, you'll be able to strike the ball more frequently in the middle of your paddle, and as a result, the ball will have an increased amount of force. Increasing the height of your return not only helps you get the ball deeper, but it also buys you more time so you can make it to the kitchen line. Bonus tip 2. Stop attacking balls when you're in a poor position. Players often make the mistake of putting themselves in a defenseless position when attempting to score. It makes sense to try and score as quickly as feasible in most sports. But pickleball is more like a game of chess when you would assume. It's not wise to rush in for the kill, as doing so could result in a significant loss of resources. Rather, study how to set up a lethal shot. Going for broke on every shot can cause you to make a lot of careless mistakes and allow your opponent plenty of chances to steal the point. Players at the net make a lot of sense if you feel confident dropping the ball within your opponent's kitchen. Conversely, if you aren't there yet and are experiencing some level of unease, it may be wise to dial things back a bit. You can now go after and play on the bounce of softer hit balls. More time for rest and recuperation follows. You only need a bucket of balls and some time to work on your serve. Many pickleball facilities provide ball bucket rentals, allowing you to focus on perfecting your swing and building the strength you'll need to dominate the court. So, what do you think about these tips for a powerful pickleball serve? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video and share it with your fellow picklers. Also, if you love pickleball, then make sure to watch the next video on our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.